So the video that we're about to watch is on something called Brifolt's Law. And it's Brifolt. And it's the idea that a relationship is only going to take place if the female in the relationship can perceive that it's beneficial to her. So let's watch it and then I'll get your reaction at the end. Should men be concerned uh, that women will date them purely for their wealth? Yes. Yes. This is what girls do. Oh yes. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Always. Yeah. Okay. If you've been watching this channel and occasionally browsing through the comment section, then chances are at some point you will have come across the following quote known as Brifolt's Law. The female, not the male, determines all the conditions of the animal family. Where the female can derive no benefit from association with the male, no such association takes place. Brifolt was an anthropologist. He died a long time ago, back in the 40s. And this quote is kind of wordy, but essentially what it's saying is that women are in control of the relationship. They decide whether or not it proceeds. They have the ultimate veto power. Women need to be benefiting from the relationship. There needs to be something that she is gaining, because if there's not, then there's not going to be a relationship. Basically, women love selfishly. It's really sad to me that this is actually a revelation to some men. You know, they get cheated on, they get dumped, you know, the relationship falls apart and it just completely destroys their world. They can't believe it. And it's not because they don't understand selfishness, because they know what selfishness feels like. They're men, they, they have self-interest. It's that they were operating under this false belief that women never act selfishly. They totally bought into this propaganda that women exist in this entire class above men. Women are pure, women are angelic, women love unconditionally, women are the true romantics. When you add on to all of that, the psychological phenomenon of transference, where men try and recreate the relationships that they had as an infant with their mother, still trying to achieve that perfect unconditional love from a woman, then it just leads to complete disaster. All of that combines to create the perfect recipe for heartbreak and disillusionment. To put all of that in a summary, you could say that men are just not psychologically equipped to handle the reality of the female psyche. They have no conception that women can operate selfishly inside romantic relationships. They believe that their love is unconditional. So when it happens and the relationship falls apart and they come face to face with the reality of female psychology, it just breaks them. Now, some people do say that my content is sexist or anti-women, and I 100% disagree with that. I have known some absolutely disgraceful men, and as far as I can tell, neither gender has a monopoly on being horrible. I know that there are some fantastic, high-quality guys, and that there are some fantastic high quality women. The reason that I do videos specifically on the darker aspects of female psychology and explaining how women do love selfishly is because I want men to be adequately prepared for what's coming. My hope is that they can avoid getting entangled with one of these horrible, low quality women because that just leads to nothing but misery. So this is just one of those truths that you absolutely need to swallow. If you're going to be in a relationship with a woman, you need to understand that she loves you selfishly. If she's in a relationship with you, it's because it's benefiting her and she wants that benefit to continue. So what do these benefits look like? Well, when she enters into a relationship with a high quality man, there are a large number of benefits. You're optimistic and ambitious, and that's really nice energy for her to be around. You're successful and wealthy and as a spillover effect, she gets to share in that wealth. You're wise and intelligent, and you're capable of having great conversations that are stimulating to her mind. You have a healthy attitude to sexuality, and you're really good at lovemaking. The list just goes on and on and on. If you are a high quality man, the benefits accrued to her by being in a relationship with you are basically endless. She isn't dating you as a favor, she's dating you for her own selfish benefit. Now, what happens if you lose your ambition? You lose your optimism? You lose your job and you're no longer financially well off. You're no longer successful. What happens if you lose interest in intellectual pursuits and you no longer have interesting conversations? What happens if you're impotent? Well, then she's likely to break up with you. Why would she stay? All of the benefits that she was enjoying by being in a relationship with you have all dried up. She's not a charity, you see. She's not doling out love and companionship to the less fortunate as a favor. No, she's much more akin to a commercial entity who's always looking for the best deal. If you lose all of the things that made you a high quality guy, well then you shouldn't be surprised when she breaks up with you. Because she hasn't really changed. 
You see, she's still motivated by the same things that motivated her when the two of you got together. She started the relationship for selfish reasons, and she's ending the relationship for selfish reasons. She hasn't changed. She was selfish then, and she is selfish now. Now, some guys want to point to Brifolt's law as though it's some kind of smoking gun, as if this is the proof of the immorality of women. But I'll tell you this, being selfish is not intrinsically immoral. Absolutely not. Brifolt's law, yes, it applies to women, but it absolutely applies to me as well. Rational self-interest is not dirty. It's not exploitative, manipulative, or dishonest. It's none of those things. Rational self-interest is wonderful, it's clean, it's pure, and it really, really helps human beings interact with each other and come to mutually beneficial exchanges. If anybody hasn't read this book, The Virtue of Selfishness by Ayn Rand, I highly recommend it. This book explains everything in detail. Yes, being exploitative is wrong, but being selfish means taking responsibility for your own happiness. It's using fair and honest exchange to get from people what you want, all kinds of things, including relationships. So I'm not going to read Brifolt's law and then point at women as though I have some kind of moral high ground because I can't honestly see any difference between them and me. As a man, I get lots of benefits from dating a high quality woman. Companionship, conversation, sex, laughter, fun, love. A high quality woman drastically improves my life, but if she suddenly becomes nasty, frigid, mean, I'm not gonna stay with her. I'm not running a charity. My motives in dating are 100% selfish, and I would expect a woman to be the same. Brifolt's law says, where the female can derive no benefit from association with the male, no such association takes place. But that could easily apply to me. I could just change it so it reads, where Alexander can derive no benefit from association with a female, no such association takes place. That is 100% an accurate statement. And so you see, I don't think that it's a problem to be loved selfishly. In fact, I believe that that's the only honest way to love somebody. If you really think about it, that is the only way that you would want to be loved. I want you to imagine two very different women and both of them want to be in a relationship with you. One of them says, I love you selfishly. I think that you're an amazing person. You're intelligent, you're ambitious. You inspire me to be the best version of myself. I want to be with you because my life would be so much better being around a person like you. The other one says, I will love you selflessly. There's really no benefit to me by being in a relationship with you. You're not going to improve my life at all, but I'll do it as charity. I'll do it out of compassion. Me being in a relationship with you, well, that's a favor that I'm doing you. Who on earth wants to be a charity case? Who wants a girl's love as though it's some kind of favor that she's doing you. If you're like me, you will want a woman to say to you, I have surveyed all of the available options and I choose you because you are my number one choice. You will benefit my life more than anybody else because you are the best partner for me. You want her to say, I am ambitious. I want the very best in life and you can bring me the most happiness. If I could be in a relationship with you, that would be my greatest accomplishment. Now, doesn't that sound better than I want to be in a relationship with you because I feel sorry for you. So as you can tell, I'm not really a huge fan of this Brifolt's Law thing because I don't really understand why it singles out women. From what I can tell, the idea that there needs to be a benefit in order for an association to take place equally applies to a high quality man. However, I do understand that lots of men have fallen for this Disney fairy tale idea that yes, men are selfish, but women are above all of that. Heaps of guys have this idea that a woman's going to stick with them through thick and thin, through every single challenge. And even when they're down, even when they're acting at their worst, she's going to continue to be loyal and pure. That belief is so dangerous because when you sincerely think that way, then you're going to be completely blind to all of the warning signs, which tell you, hey, she's thinking about moving on. So if people are quoting this Brifolt's law thing because they think that it's important that men understand that women are just like us, they're capable of acting selfishly, you know, they're gonna pursue their own self-interest, well then I'm in favor of it because that is extremely important for men to be aware of. They need to integrate that information so they can plan their dating lives accordingly. So if this sounds like you, you're one of these guys who's still lost in the fantasy and the delusion, you still believe women are, angels and that they never act selfishly, then listen to the quote one more time. Let the truth of it, the calculating rational self-interest of this particular quote really hit home until you know it at the core of your being, until it breaks away 
all the fantasies you've got in your mind about female psychology until you know that they're just like us fundamentally. They're pursuing a slightly different goal, but the motivation fundamentally is selfish. Here's the quote. The female, not the male, determines all of the conditions of the animal family. Where the female can derive no benefit from association with the male, no such association takes place. Yeah, of course. I, there was this guy I hung out with years ago who used to say when I was younger and he was a lot older and he used to say to me, you know, women choose. Remember remember that, Sarah used to say. Women get to choose. And, and it's true. Women do get to choose. It's no offense to anyone. And that's why I love how you say, don't take that for granted. Don't ever take your role as a partner for granted. There's always going to be that moment where the woman is just can lose interest um, because you're being pitiful, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that that somewhat accounts for the bitterness of some guys if they get complacent in a relationship and they do take the attraction that's coming towards them for granted at some point and they really, really need to stop doing that. I'll say for myself, as time's gone on, I don't trust anybody who's not in touch with their own inner selfishness. If they don't know that about themselves, that fundamentally every single action that they take is selfish if they're still playing the martyr they're still pretending like there's some kind of saint and they're above all that i am fucking suspicious i keep a wide berth from that person it's delusion like it's self-delusion isn't it like not actually owning what you want and what you're creating what you're stepping into in your life and and therefore then you don't own when you don't get it either because you the the other thing i like about your approach to it is i found it very validating